Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Facebook Live. My name is Scott and I am an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo in the Hamill Family Play Zoo. And I am joined by Christy, another animal care specialist who is holding our main attraction today. So today we're gonna talk about a really cool animal. We love these guys at the zoo because they are very unique, but they really get a bad rap. And we are talking about the Madagascar hissing cockroach. So a lot of people find these to be creepy crawly. You know, you've all probably heard stories or maybe seen them of scattering under the fridge when the lights come on. But uh, cockroaches are very cool animals. Uh, we have, as the name suggests, these cockroaches in particular are from Madagascar, which is an island off the east coast of Africa. Um, and they get the name hissing cockroach because they do in fact hiss. So you will often hear that vocalization um, and how they hiss and where it comes from. They have these tiny little holes along their body called spiracles. And there's actually air pushed out of those holes that causes them to make a hissing noise. And so they do that hiss for a couple different reasons. Um, they will do that during courtship. So the males will often make a hissing noise to attract females. Um, and then also during courtship, they will hiss. Um, but then they also use it as a defense mechanism as well as to um, communicate with other males. So these cockroaches are very social animals. They um, live in very large groups uh, in the forest. But they will, the males in particular, they will uh, fight for their territory and they do that by um, hissing. And they also have, if you look really closely here, they have these large um, blunt horns on their head that are called um, pronatal butt humps. And they actually use those to fight other males. Now they don't necessarily hurt each other, but it's kind of more of a show of strength. Um, so when it comes time to breed, uh, those do come in handy. And you can tell the difference between the male and the female because the female doesn't have those humps that are as pronounced. Um, so there is uh, some, so there is some distinction there, and that it that makes them sexually dimorphic. So as I said, they um, they get the name from from the hissing, and they do come from Madagascar. So these cockroaches can be found along forest floors. Um, the reason we here at the zoo love cockroaches and we try to speak positively about them is because. Um, they are stigmatized and they are actually very important for the environment. So cockroaches are kind of like nature's recycling tool. They are what is known as um, detritivores, which means that they feed on decaying um, material, organic material. So they eat a lot of different things. Um, they will, they typically like to eat sugars and starches that are breaking down, but they'll also eat um, dead carcasses from animals. They might eat other, you know, decaying bugs and leaves and things like that. Um, so they are kind of, they, they live on the forest floor in the rainforest of Madagascar and a lot of people as well as animals rely on these rainforests. So these cockroaches play a very vital role as nutrient cycle, as the nutrient cycle exists. Um, so they're, they're gonna, like I said, live in large groups and they're gonna feed on all this stuff, but then they are a very important food source for other animals. So types of animals that might feed on them include birds that eat insects, um, lizards, mammals, all sorts of things. So even if you've been to Hamill Family Play Zoo and seen our uh, friends at the lemurs that are right down the hall from our Madagascar hissing cockroaches, they all come from the same area and prosimians like lemurs will even feast on cockroaches sometimes. So they do collect a lot of that organic material and they kind of cycle it back into the ecosystem and they're a very important food source. So as I mentioned, they do kind of get a bad rap because they are found all over the world. Um, they are nocturnal animals, so they tend to infest certain places and live um, and be active at night, but they're not anything to fear. Um, and a lot of people think they are kind of gross and they have the ability to run up to about three miles per hour. So when they do, when they do hit the lights for such a small animal, that's why you see them scatter. Um, but they, and they do have a tendency at times, kind of a fun fact, or I don't know, maybe it's a gross fact, but <laughs> they'll eat they'll eat almost anything. Um, they've been known to feast on things such as glue, paint on the walls. Um, they will even feast on cigars. Uh, I also read that they are known to at times feast on things such as eyelashes. Ew. So don't worry though, they're not gonna crawl on you and eat your eyelashes. 
but they are known to just consume a lot of this stuff. Um, so if you look closely at them too, Christy's holding them. One thing that's awesome about these guys, is they actually like to be touched. Um, so if you, I know the zoo is closed right now, but um, at some time in the future, if you come to the zoo and you're able to see the cockroaches, if we have them out, um, you can actually kind of pet them and they don't mind it. They might hiss a little bit, but that's just their vocalization. Um, and if you watch them crawl around on Christy, they have six long, kind of spiny, hairy legs. Um, so that's another thing that might give you the heebie-jeebies, but they are uh, really, those, those spiny legs are, have little claws at the end of them and that helps them climb on stuff. So they can climb on virtually any surface. Um, if you see our exhibit um, when you're at Hamill Family Play Zoo, we actually do have the top of the enclosure lined with Vaseline because that is something that helps keep them from escaping because they are such good climbers. But once they get to that Vaseline, they're not able to climb through that. Um, so you might be wondering why we're talking about cockroaches today. Well, we're actually talking about cockroaches because Valentine's Day is coming up. So what does Valentine's Day have to do with cockroaches? You might ask, well, the zoo, um, for those of you who maybe not necessarily love the idea of the Hallmark holiday every year and don't get swept up in the, you know, joy and the spirit of love, you can take these cockroaches and actually name them. We're giving you the opportunity to make a donation to the zoo and you can name these cockroaches, possibly after an ex or somebody that might have wronged you in the past. So if you just recently found out that uh, Chad was trying to slide into your best friend's DMs, then we got a cockroach for you. This could be Chad right here. Or maybe uh, back in 2019, you met Jessica and you thought she was the one. Then 2020 hit and we had the quarantine and found out that she wasn't crazy about your Xbox habits and how much <laughs> dishes you left in the sink. So maybe that thing uh, kind of went sour. You got a cockroach for Jessica. But at the same time, it doesn't all have to be negative. You can, you can uh, donate for somebody that is special in your life that has been a positive influence. Um, maybe that quarantine had the opposite effect. Maybe you met Brian and you found out he makes, makes a killer sourdough bread. You want to keep him around for when the quarantine's over and you can help host a Super Bowl party with some good homemade sourdough. So you can check out uh, ccs.org. We'll be posting... Um, you can do sales up to Friday, and we will be posting, um, you can do a $15 donation, and then on Valentine's Day this weekend, we're going to be posting a board that has a bunch of uh, hearts with cockroach names on them, so you'll be able to see your post, even though the zoo is closed right now until March 1st, um, you will be able to see your, uh, your ex or whoever may have wronged you, or whoever you loved and wanted to donate a cockroach name to. Maybe just be specific when you tell them. Oh, yes. <laughs> and also, I will mention, um, these are only first names. So you will not be, we will not be outing anybody specifically. So uh, there is uh, some anonymity to it, to your, uh, to your oh wronged gosh. ex. I know personally, I have a few cockroaches already handpicked out for some, you know, people of my past. And Christy may as well. Who do you have going up on the board, Christy? Um, I don't want to mention names. <laughs> All right, well, that's fair. We we won't uh, we won't out anybody that may be watching from Christie's past. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I have some. Well, we have some questions some that questions. have come All in. Right, yeah. Let's hear it. Uh, so, what do they feel like? What do they feel like? So, um, cockroaches actually have a really hard exoskeleton. So I can um, touch it. They're kind of smooth. So if you look closely at the male here. Um, they have what is called sternites along their body, and these are these uh, protective part of their exoskeleton that um, they're pretty hard, so they are pretty rough. They're able to withstand a lot of different things, um, but they're smooth, so when you pet them, uh, they do feel pretty smooth. They're not, you know, bumpy or gross. And um, how many species of cockroaches are there in the world? There are, as we, as far as we know, there are over 4,500 species. They are found all over the world. Um, there aren't that many species that are actually considered pests. Uh, most of them are found in nature, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're very good tools in nature. Um, but there are a lot. The common ones we see around here, you know, in America, are probably all similar species. 
Um, what what's the size difference between these cockroaches and the ones that we would find here in the U.S.? Um, they're not that much different. These cockroaches range about two to three inches. They are on the larger side. Uh, this is a pretty large species, so the ones you might find in your house in the U.S. would be a little bit smaller. And how many eggs can they lay at once? So Madagascar hissing cockroaches are, um, I wanted to mention this, goes along with our Valentine's theme. They are actually very prolific breeders. Uh, they live about two to three years. Um, the females at a time, their gestation period is about 60 days and they will lay anywhere between 20 and 40 eggs. So as you can imagine, um, if, you know, theoretically, if everything went smoothly and their offspring were all healthy and survived and able to create offspring, it is, they could potentially, one female could potentially breed, or not breed, but they could be the reason for 10 million cockroaches in their two to three year lifespan. Well, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> can you remind us again how fast they can move? They can move about three miles per hour, which may not seem too fast to us, but when they're that small and they're running around, around your kitchen floor, it's pretty fast. I hope I don't find these on my <laughs> kitchen floor. Um, are there any other cockroaches um, here at Brookfield Zoo? Um, we, I don't think we have any other cockroaches on exhibit. Uh, they, we may have some uh, for, you know, for research purposes, but the Madagascar hissing cockroaches are the ones you will be able to find at Hamill Family Play Zoo. Uh, they're also the ones when we are open and we have our programming going um, that we do actually bring out and let you see and touch. How long can they live? They will live about three years, five max. Okay. How, how big are they when they hatch out of an egg? So when they hatch, they're only about a quarter of an inch. Um, the babies, when they, when they hatch, will actually stay with their mother for um, several weeks until they have gone through several different morphs and they're um, kind of hard enough and strong enough to go out on their own, but their mother will protect them. They are kind of cute. <laughs> like I said, they're really friendly. They like being pet. So everyone wants to know, which is your favorite Madagascar hissing cockroach? Well, I can't really pick a favorite because we have so many of them that it is, they, they do live in groups um, and they kind of thrive in groups. So they're all, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between distinct personalities because they're all very similar. But um, as I mentioned earlier, I have a couple in mind that I would like to pick names for. So I'll, I'll go with those ones, but okay. I won't say the names. All right, well, um, thank you guys for viewing and uh, with any of your questions, hopefully we'll be able to sway some opinions a little bit on cockroaches. Uh, they are really fascinating animals and they are very important to the environment. Um, so as I mentioned, you can buy uh, hearts, whether good, happy or unhappy Valentine's Day, um, up to Friday and then you will see that post over the weekend on Valentine's Day. Have a good day.